What's going on, everybody? I'm Sage, and I hope you've been enjoying Dragonflight as much as I have, especially uh, now that everything is kind of in full swing and we're about to get into that very, very hyper content uh, week that's coming up on this next reset where the raids, Mythic Plus, and everything else, Primal Storms, and so on, are all going to be available for us to actually play towards. Um, so I wanted to make a video kind of going over these two weeks uh, that we've been playing, almost two weeks anyway, that we've been playing, kind of where I've been, uh, what I've been investing my time into, how my character is shaping up. Um, it's going to start off with going over, you know, how the expansion launch went, uh, how questing and leveling went, and then go into how, uh, you know, gear, gear grinding, um, and renowns and reputations and so on, um, are going to play out. Now, this is kind of like a recap update on how my character is progressing. However, uh, once I get into the reputation portion of this video, I will be going over several tips and tricks to gain uh, a decent chunk of renown and uh, proper ways to, you know, go about getting, uh, you know, better investments into those renowns. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of stuff out there about like the Tuscar and f hunting down like uh, totems and stuff for him, which is definitely not the best way um, to uh, for, for Tuscar specifically. So stay tuned for all of that. If you don't want to hear the updates over my character and so on, um, then skip on over to those. I'll have the timestamps inside the description below. Um, past that real quickly, thank you guys all for the support. We got up over a thousand. So thank you guys very, very, very much for that. If you guys do like the content, or if you're a first time viewer of the channel, please like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content to uh, stay uh, up to date on everything Feral, as well as obviously other stuff that's going on inside the game. And past that, let's go ahead and jump into it. So let's start off with the launch. Now the launch for me, and I've been playing this game since vanilla, and this launch for me specifically, personally, was probably the worst I've actually played. Uh, and the reason why is because when we first when it first launched the boat didn't show up uh we got a timer for five minutes that it would show up after five minutes from the dock master and then after those five minutes we just got a note saying the goblins are working on it um so even just getting to the dragon isles we were already behind which really really felt bad because you know the whole initial thing is like okay let's get there let's get leveled as fast as we can let's start getting all of the new stuff because at the start of an expansion is when you make money and that's what a lot of uh myself included plus a lot of my guildmates were looking towards was to make money at the start of the expansion so that we could you know hold us over for the majority of the expansion which is a great way to go about this start of expansions because there is a lot of content that you can do there's a lot of gearing and stuff like that however at the start of an expansion it's always the best time really to try to get inside some kind of market to make some kind of money um, so we felt like we were already getting behind and then finally after a long time, finally, um, we got a boat that was uh, headed to uh, Dragonflight, um, the Dragon Isles, and it took forever uh, to get there. The loading screens were horrendous. Um, once we actually got there, uh, trying to pick up quests was horrendous, trying to turn them in, trying to just kill a mob, uh, trying to just give get off one spell. For me, it was like getting off one Moonfire, getting off one Thrash was super, super difficult. Um, the servers were pretty much eating themselves alive. They were crashing left and right. Several people were getting DC'd nonstop. Several people couldn't even log into the servers at all. Um, and especially at that first starting zone, uh, it was tremendously laggy too many people trying to get into one area at a time and then once you get to that first little hub is when most of the people in my group just flat out started dcing for several several hours really um which is probably why it was probably the one one of the worst launches for me uh and in my opinion because it de-incentivized playing the game because if you invested several several hours you know if you're playing planning on playing for 12 hours or whatever at the start uh in, in one session or more um like i did definitely more it really de-incentivize you playing because you're going to out of those 12 hours or how many hours you placed inside the launch you were getting very very uh small amount of actual things done so the the launch itself was actually pretty bad in my opinion um but it was still very cool to see all the new stuff i still enjoyed uh playing because if you play the game with friends then you know 
anything, even if it's buggy or anything like that, you can get through it. Um, and so me and my guildmates were having uh, having laughs over everything that was broken. You know, obviously glitches that were happening, quests and stuff. Uh, certain people getting dc would Some people getting the RNG good rolls where they didn't get DC'd or they were able to like continuously uh, play the game, stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, most of us had a very poor time, especially on the first two days of the expansion until things started like slowly started to get better and better uh you know looting mobs was horrendous and anytime you try to loot a mob you pretty much dc so we almost, almost at the beginning expansion just stopped looting everything unless you had to for a quest which doesn't feel good especially when all of those items that you could potentially be getting from them are pretty much an advancement at the beginning of an expansion but anyway that was pretty much it uh the start of the expansion was not the most optimal in my opinion but we got through it, right? We got through it. Eventually, we hit 70. Um, it took us a ton of time extra. Most people, uh, World First got in like three hours, uh, just under three hours or something like that. Um, and typically, we were saying that it was going to be anywhere from like five hours to seven hours for the majority of people, uh, you know, especially people that have played or done beta, like myself, that it would be somewhere in that range. Um, or, you know, some people would be a little bit over that. But the five to seven hour mark is what we were going for. However, obviously, with all the glitches and bugs and stuff like that i actually didn't end up hitting it until like the 11th hour after the launch or something like that which is not ideal but what can you do when everybody's dcing and crashing and so on and so forth uh it was it was definitely an experience all right so that was the launch the launch not the best let's put that aside though now let's get into some of the good stuff that's that that has happened um so after after we finally got to 70, then you start gearing up, right? Gearing up is the first initial thing you want to do. Um, and uh, one of the things that we found uh, over the entire course of this is obviously everything is scaling throughout the world based on your item level. Uh, all the outworld content, all the outworld drops, everything is based off of your item level. And not just your I equipped item level, but your in-bag item level. So you can have items that you can equip but aren't your actual leather specialization for feral um, that would increase your overall bag item level making sure that like once we got all of those gears that you were uh, once you got to 70 and you started farming you know heroic dungeons to get those item levels or uh going and doing war mode for bloody tokens because that's a phenomenal way to get some gear too you got that 366 gear those were a good way to just get the base gear now one of the ways to get the highest item level gear that you can get right off the get-go is going to be reputations uh which is your renowns through the different areas inside dragonflight but there are several different reputations outside of just the basic uh renowns that you get from each zone and so the first one i actually ended up maxing out is going to be over here at the cobalt assembly so right here on the map down in azure span you're going to be up here in the top with the cobalt assembly and this was something that we uh we ended up doing because we knew that there was some kind of renown for um kind of i just followed a guildie that was doing that was trying to do it over here and we kind of got a uh, got over here before the entire wave of people decided to join in on this and pretty much what it is it's a pretty quick renown it's like a mini tour gas you get some powers uh from the area that you can apply to your character and then just kind of decimate all the mobs every time you kill mobs you get some um you get drops that give you rep. So, what does the rep give you? Well, the rep from this character, uh, or the rep from this gentleman right here, is going to give you a 389 ring. And there are three different versions of it. There's a damage one, there's a tanking one, and a healing one. Um, and it's a 389 ring, which you're not going to get a drop anywhere in the world that's going to be higher than this. Even with the super rares that we'll talk about here in shortly, you're not going to get something that's higher than this. You can craft higher than this if you want to craft a ring, but for the most part, getting a 389 ring is very good, even if it's not the best stats for you or if the damage proc isn't as great as you would hope the item level itself helps inflate the world item level for you so that you can get better drops from those super rares or from the world quest and stuff that spawns so it's definitely worthwhile to get it took very little time in order to actually obtain the rep for them um you know so i would recommend if you haven't got this jump over to cobalt assembly spend some time over here just farming mobs especially once you get superpowers and call it a day
All right, so after the Cobalt Assembly, the second reputation that I was able to grind out to get some gear is going to be over here at the Obsidian Citadel inside the Waking Shore. This is the Rathian and Sibillion rep quest, which is pretty much over here. This is where Rathian's at. And what you're going to do is just farming the mobs over here is going to give you something called key fragments and key framings. And once you have the key fragments and key framings, if you have three... Uh, three framings and 30 fragments, you can make a key and then turn it into Rathian or Sibelian, Sibelian's on the other side, for some increased rep with them. Uh, it's not only going to give you, it gives you 250 rep baseline. Um, obviously, with the last week here, you've been able to increase that with the Dark Moon Fair that's been going on by an additional 10%. If you're human, it goes up even more because you get 10% as a human uh, for reputations as a racial. Now... It also gives you Valdraken rep on top of that. It's the most consistent Valdraken rep grind that there is, but it only gives you 50 per key turn in, 55 with Dark Moon Fair, 60 if you have Dark Moon Fair and you're human. Um, and this was a very easy grind to do. It Once again, just like the Cobalt Assembly, it's not like the Renowned ones. There's only six levels to this one. Um, so if I go over here to the Quartermaster, and I talk to this gentleman, you can see that I am a true friend of Rathion. Six out of six. And what does that get you? Well, that gets you... This right here, this Obsidian Caller, which is 389 item level. As well as it gives you the Obsidian Cape, which is 398. 398 is one of the highest item level pieces you can get right before raid, obviously outside of crafting. Crafting, you can get things uh, up to 405, depending on how much renown you've actually completed, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but from Rathian completing, uh, just going over here and grinding, you can grind rares as well, which the rares all have a chance to drop gear for you as well. Um, and there are a ton of rares over here in the Obsidian Sanctum, so I would recommend spending some time over here. Just get one of them done. You can get both of them done if you want to. If you get both Rathian and Sibillion done um, for and fill up all of the rep bars, then you will be able to get a Mammoth Mount, which is pretty cool. Um... But for me, I started off with Rathian mainly because I wanted to get the gear rewards from it, as well as I wanted to get the Black Drake, which is the one I'm riding currently. The Black Highland Customized Drake, which is what I'm wearing, or what I'm riding. One other thing I wanted to mention while I'm over here, uh, I guess we can fly over here and show Sibelian. So Sibelian's over here. At the, week, at the beginning of the week, it asks you to pick between which two that you want to... Uh, that you want to rep with pretty much you want to support and what that's going to do is that's going to drop you some extra green items so i did with rathian which gives you these uh saga signets uh it is a mark for sibelian however you can still turn into keys to either one you want so as soon as you get enough resources to make a key you can turn it into either one so you can rep up with either one just the same the rewards are also going to be the same between the two uh, as well but if you want to kind of double down on your time, then the good thing that you can do to double down is going to be over here. If you've completed Lore Master, which you should if you're rep grinding, uh, I completed Lore Master as well as there's a quest called Lend a Helping Span for the Azure Span that you would want to complete. But once you do all of that, there's going to be another quest turn in right here. If, if you turn keys in here, then you'll be able to get this uh, card that they give you that once you activate that card on you, it gives you a two-day buff as long as you don't die. Um, that will allow you to pick up magmotes. And what magmotes do is once you collect a thousand of them, once you uh, And you get them by just killing everything over in the Obsidian Sanctum. But once you collect a thousand of them, then you're going to come over here to this cave, which is part of that quest line inside the Waking Shore. And this NPC right here, uh, if you have that buff on you, which I don't currently, then you will be able to talk to them and give a thousand of your resources in order to get a Magma Snell Mount. Um, and it's not, obviously, that's nothing gear-related or anything like that. It's just something that you can spend, you know, your time doing since you're going to be over there farming for the Sibelian and Rathian rep anyway you can get this right here this magma slug uh, while you're also grinding for rep and gear so it's kind of like a double whammy just make sure that you obviously do lore master first if you're trying to get gear or not gear but if you're trying to get renowned um, through anything you should definitely try to complete your lore master as well as any side quest that you possibly can find which even if you complete lore master and the quest lend a helping span there are still quests outside of that that will give you rep that are not included in any of the meta quest achievements. Um, so keep that in mind.
All right, and that pretty much covers up the Obsidian Sanctum. You get a very, very strong cape and a very strong neck piece out of it. Um, and then we will head over to the next rep. All right, so the next rep I'm going to talk about is going to be the Centaurs. And the Centaurs are actually the first Renown that I have capped out at Max Renown, which is going to be 25. So here I got Centaurs at 25, which is one of the main uh, area Renowns that you can get. And the gear that they give you, I'll open this right here up. You can get a 376 uh, boots. But the big one that you get at the end is going to be a 389 chest piece, um, which, once again, this is stuff that will get replaced next week for sure once Mythic Plus comes out. However, it gives you the one up. However, also on top of that, uh, since I completed all 25 levels of Renown, at the end of each of the Renown levels for Centaur, uh, or for any of them, uh, Centaur and Dragon Seal Expedition are 25, uh, Valdraken Accord and the Tuscar are 30. So, But at the end of Centaur, you get a uh, Heroic Reward, which gives you a Primal Infusion, which Primal Infusion is that item that allows you to uh, craft an item up to 405 item level as long as you have a crafter that's capable of doing so. I am able to do this, and I can get it very, very close to 405. I think 402 is my current crafting capability as I'm making this video, um, which I will be able to complete this um, at the start of next week because I have a lot of crafting knowledge for my leatherworking skill. My leatherworking skill is capped out, but the knowledge that I have, I placed in other areas past the item that I'm going to craft for this. And once I have the knowledge from the beginning of next week, I will be able to craft my 405 piece for raid, which is my goal and uh, for raid and for mythic plus now how did we get to 25 renown with centaur so centaur is the easiest one by far to do and the reason why is because it's consistent you can do it anytime any day and it will always be going on and you can always continuously farm it and you can farm it in an extremely reliable way if there's no rng to it at all there's just you can do it and get the base rewards or you can actually participate in it and get increased chance at rewards and what it is is if you zoom out on your full map there's going to be this horn on one of the um zones currently it's in the waking shore so it's called grand hunt it's lasting for 28 more minutes normally it lasts for about an hour and a half or so and then you look on your map and it's going to tell you where it's at so over here you have grand hunting party which is five out of six there's six waves in total uh the current hunt is six five wave five out of six of them uh, and it counts down so once you're over here in the area you're going to get a taskbar over here just a scenario taskbar and this is going to get filled up by everybody that's doing the hunt currently now there are two ways you can do this. You can participate in the hunt and actively try to get these tasks done, or you can AFK on the top of some rooftops, which a lot of people do. And this is what I'm going to say that like your, your rewards will vary. If you just AFK it, you get 15 reputation every single time a wave done. So it's 15 times your six, right? Which is going to be 90 rep in total. Now, you're also guaranteed to get a spoils, a spoils pack from the... Uh, a spoiled pack from the hunt is going to give you four trophies. Each trophy can give you around 25 rep, depending on when you turn it in and if you have your Dark Moon Fairy buff. So what I did is you want to turn it in at a 20 because you want to get the highest amount of points you can so the Dark Moon buff would actually increase it. The Dark Moon buff is going away soon. So what I did is I turned it in at 20 stacks because uh, if you turn it in at 20 or if you have 20 in your bags, the Centaur rep will allow you to turn it in 20 at a time. And once you do that, you will gain 550 rep. Now this is once again with the Dark Moon Fairy buff, so it'll probably be 500 when the Dark Moon Fairy buff ends. However... It is pretty much guaranteed. So you can sit here and AFK it or you can participate in it. I recommend participating if you're actually grinding the rep. And the reason why is because there's going to be rares, uh, boss, mini bosses that you'll fight inside the hunts. And those always have a chance to drop more trophies. And what you want to do is you want to gain the most trophies. That's how you're going to get this rep. Because if you're relying on the rep that you get from just AFKing here for like the waves, you're only getting 15 per. It's going to take you a lifetime almost to get full rep. But if you get all these hunting trophies, that's where you're going to get the most rep from. Um, you get four at the end of every single hunt, and then you turn those in, and you just rinse and repeat. Every single time a hunt 
is finished or concludes, it moves spots and just keeps going. So like after this one right here concludes, it's going to actually jump over here to the left and have, once again, six more waves. After that one's completed, it actually jumps up over here and you do the same thing. Six waves and so on and so forth. And you just rotate through it until the hour, um, the hour and a half that it's actually up inside that zone is over and then once it's over it just jumps to another zone and starts continue once again it's continuous so it's the easiest one because it's the most reliable one as well as you can actually just afk it if you really wanted to if you just were doing something else on a different monitor so on and so forth uh, but once again recommend actually participating in it i would say about 90 percent of them i have participated in some of them i actually just let my son play um as I was rep grinding because he wanted some daddy time and I let him do that. Uh, it was a great way for it. All right, so while we're actually just chilling here inside the Waking Shore, since I was showing off the Centaur and the Hunts, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the Dragon Scale Expedition. So Dragon Scale Expedition is one of my lowest ones. It is my lowest one, uh, currently at 16 and a half uh, renowned. And the reason why I actually went more for Centaur and Tuscar is because I'm a leather worker, so Dragon Scale Expedition doesn't have anything for a leather worker, and it's also not going to give you uh, knowledge for if you're a leather worker. Uh, so leather working and skinning is going to get their knowledge points for their crafting through the Centaur and the Tuscar, uh, but not through Dragon Scale Expedition. And there's people that have like uh, I think it's engineering, blacksmithing that aren't going to get anything from like Tuscar, but they will get it from Dragon Scale Expedition as far as the uh, points you get for. Let me find it. Uh, right there. Crafter's knowledge. The crafter's knowledge points that you get. which you, These both give you like five points for each of your professions. I was leatherworking and skinning, so I got five points for each. And Dragon Scale Expedition won't have it. However, Dragon Scale Expedition, since we're here on the Waking Shore, Dragon Scale Expedition is the piece on the map right here uh, for the base camp. And we're going to go ahead and fly over there, and I'm going to show you exactly what I've been doing over there. Alright, so jumping over here to Dragon Scale Expedition, Dragon Scale also has uh, these Dragon Isles artifacts that you can turn in. Once again, you can turn them in at 20 uh, per. It is less reputation per 20 you turn in than the Centaurs were because it's 330, so it's going to be about 300 without the Dark Moon Fair buff. Um, but a couple things that are very notable about uh, the Dragon Scale Expedition. Dragon Scale Expedition is going to have several things that you need to unlock. Uh, it's probably known by now that farming dirt and dirt piles uh, are something you're going to want to get, as well as level 16 is very huge because you can open these uh, magical treasure chests that will start spawning around the map for you as you're flying around. And these are kind of like empowered versions of the dirt where you're going to open up these chests that are hidden uh, across the world and you're going to gain a whole bunch of artifacts that's kind of how i have some of these artifacts right here the tuscar totems the dragon scale uh, artifacts some of my hunting trophies came from that as well um oh and we see we weren't even actually in the hunt but we, since we were nearby we actually got the grand spoils so if we click on that boom we got the four it's always a guaranteed four every single time you complete a hunt but back over to Dragon Scale Expedition, one of the things you'll open up once you uh, start leveling up your renown is going to be this little talent tree over here um, through this gentleman on the side. And one of the things that, or a couple of things that you really, really want to get is going to be this cartographer's flag. And what that does is it's going to place flags at the tip tops of several locations throughout the entire Dragon Isles. I believe there's about 20 of them. And each time you place a flag above one of those areas, it gives you 250 rep, and obviously more if you have um, Dark Moon Fairy buff, or if you're human, so on and so forth. Uh, but you're going to get 250 rep baseline for those across the 20 of them, which pretty much means you get a free renown if you just fly around and place these. Some of these are actually pretty difficult to land and place them on there, but it is definitely worth the rep. Uh, the other things uh, definitely help you with some of the world quests. There is a climbing gear world quest where you can climb around. It's actually very cool how they did it. Uh, it allows you to interact with the walls that they've had uh, throughout the uh, Dragon Isles uh, for these world quests to spawn. There's also a Pokemon Snap is what we're calling it, where you can get on like a raft or a hot air balloon and you can take pictures of the animal and the wild wildlife that will give you... Uh, completion of world quest it'll unlock that uh the big thing though is going to be this uh anomaly detection spell framework and what this is going to do is that before you get to rank 16 
one minute every 10 minutes, you can press this and it's going to turn your screen gray. So if I push this on, put it on right now, this is it right here. And what that's going to do for you is it's going to allow you to see all chests, all chests, all magical items, anything like that, all the dirt nodes, they're all going to light up with purple and then you can just see them much, much better because it allows you, to, you know, to kind of see through, well, it does let you see through walls. So if you see a tre tre treasure chest and it was like behind this mountain, it would show it. Also, the magical chest that I was talking about, while you have this active, you can actually interact with those and loot them. But you can only do it while you have the buff. So you have a minute to find them and loot them before this buff goes away. If you're working on solving the puzzle to open a chest, kind of like the Torghast chests were, um, and this buff goes away, the chest will just vanish from your sight. So keep that in mind. One of the other things I want to talk about is this mechanical bypass. We were just talking about those chests and... Once every two hours, which is a very long time, you can utilize this mechanism to bypass it and just insta-solve it. So you can place it on there and get the loot out of it very, very quickly. There are a couple other things that are very useful. Uh, this helping hand is very useful inside those world quests. Um, however, a lot of this is just a big sink in your Dragon Isle supplies. So make sure that you're doing this uh, with that in mind. You don't want to spend all your Dragon Isle supplies because that's what you're going to need to be able to buy the gear and stuff off of the vendors later on, as well as there's other things that you just want to get. One of the main things you have to get when you go with the Dragon Isle's Expedition is when you unlock it, you're going to want to grab several shovels because if you do not have these shovels inside your inventory, you will not be able to see the dirt piles that are around the world, meaning that you won't be able to get additional trophies uh, or relics and so, so on. Um, throughout the Dragon Isles. So you want to make sure once you're able to unlock this that you grab a few. I have a couple of them in my bags currently and I can even buy a few more just because, you know, just because. Um, the rep that you gain or the through the rep that you gain with them, you can gain a 376 gloves as well as you can gain 389 pants. The 389 pants is my current goal um, because it's the last thing that I can really get before raid comes out as far as just gear from rep because that's the closest thing I'm to right now, and I pretty much have all the other ones, uh, except for Valdraken, which we'll talk in about shortly. So I will be grinding out these treasure boxes uh, around the world so that I can rep up with Dragon Sail Expedition, which I only need uh, a renown and a half to complete this, because I'm at 16 and a half already, uh, and that is my next goal. Also, from here, you can buy this Expedition Supply Kit. And what that does is, when you're around the world and you don't have this thing right here, and you want to be able to... Uh, buy into it, uh, get something additional, extra, then you can click on this and it opens up the talent tree from anywhere and you can purchase whatever you want throughout the world. Um, the anomaly detection spell framework that I was telling you about as well as the mechanism bypass is going to be in your general spells uh, right here and right there. And obviously it depends on the name of your spells where it's going to fall, but most of the time it should be on your first page is where you're going to see these two abilities. As we're going to fly over to our next destination, which is going to be the Tuscar area, I'm actually going to go over the Valdraken Accord one. The Valdraken Accord, as far as rep grinding, is going to more so be passively as you gain world quest reputation, uh, additional quests, as well as you have trophies that you can turn with them, which is the Titan Relics. Um, but mainly, if you're going to do the Rathian Sibelian uh, rep, a grind that's going to be what's going to get you the most uh valdraken accord uh you do want to get a contract for valdraken accord as soon as you can once you especially start knocking out some of the other ones that way you can qu very quickly start repping up with them valdraken accord has some very good uh rewards at the end of it um the most notable one for me personally is actually the dragon armor the dragons that we have currently the highland drake all of those ones the velocity drake uh proto drake so on and so forth um, they all have an armor set, and that armor set is locked behind Valdraken Accord Rep, which I believe it's 22, 24. We can actually look at it real quick. Uh, I want to say it was hmm, Combat Helm. Nope, 22. That's gear. Maybe it was 26. There you go, 26. 26 is when you unlock that gear. So that'd be really, really cool. Uh, as far as getting the gear at 22, because of the fact that the only consistent rep grind for this is going to actually be through Rathian and Sibelian rep farming, um, I'm not going to devote that much time to get that last piece of gear from there. I'll get that one over time. Now, the last piece of info I have is for the Tuscar area. And the Tuscar is actually one of the most 
controversial uh, rep grinds that there kind of is currently uh, because there's a lot of issues with some people not believing how people are getting their rep uh, completed as well as it is just complicated. Um, so the first thing you do is that there is this event that happens about every three hours where you're going to talk to Big Canook and you're going to get tasks from him. Every single time you complete a task, you get 25 rep baseline and then that increases with Dark Moon, Fair, and Human. Um, and obviously it's been super laggy since the start of the expansion um, and it's the only reliable way that most people, I would say, have done to get rep for Tuscar. However, there is no way to just just do the soups and get up to 22 or 30. I have people inside my guild who have completed 30 in Tuscar, and they actually did it a couple days ago, and it was through a means that was kind of by accident when we started it, and I'm going to tell you guys all that information right now. So if you've been having issues with Tuscar reputation, or if you want to just know how you can inflate your, your Tuscar reputation without getting banned, you know, because there were several people that got all of their renowns done, but they did it through like a bug ban. Um, this is completely legit. It's the intended way to actually do all of this. So, you know, stay tuned and we're going to talk about it right now. So obviously you can do uh, the soup. Uh, the community feast is what it's called. Uh, the way that we have found is that if you want to have a group that's going to go there, the entire group leaves, uh, goes there independently. You go there with war mode on. And the objective here is you go there with war mode on outside of a group. That way everybody can go there and you can see which shard has the least amount of people. And that's what you want. You want the least amount of people. That way Big Canuke will be able to give you the most tasks. And this does 100% work. You go there in war mode, and then if nobody has a good shard, you turn war mode off because you can go to a little hut over here and back and turn it off. And then you can shard yourself again to a different shard, a uh, non-war mode one, and then you'll come over here and start doing the task from Big Canuke at a much rapid rate. Uh, it has proven itself. There's also some um, superstition that if you come over here and you stand next to him and continuously talk to him uh, when the tasks are being given out, that he will give it to you. We also uh, I have one guildie that swears if you come over here and you're not inside a party, that he will prioritize you over a group. Um, so on and so forth. So there's some superstition behind it, but obviously the, less, the least amount of people that are in your shard the more benefits you'll have. So if you come over here in war mode and then it's very, very crowded, you can try to get a different shard by turning war mode off, uh, as well as if you have a group of people, uh, have them all come over here independently, and then whoever has the least amount of people in their shard can just start inviting people in. Now, let's talk about rep. So rep uh, here, the big thing is level 10. Once you get level 10, you're able to do ice fishing. Uh, with the Tuscar. So if we come over here and we jump down all the way here to level 10, you get ice fishing. So this happened last week. Uh, ice fishing was active last week. The ice fishing hole is now dormant technically. You can still ice fish, but it's not going to be with the increased rate. Currently, if we look on the map for this week, the ice fishing that's active is going to be the magma one over here, the burning ascendance fishing hole, as well as the river mouth fishing hole has been open since launch. So this one has maintained for the last two weeks. This one has swapped from the Tuscar area up here to the Citadel. Now, why is this important at all, Sage, right? Like, why, why does this matter? And the reason why it matters is because at level 10, if you have 50 fishing, um, because you have to have 50 fishing, like actual regular fishing, uh, if you come up here with 50 fishing and you're level 10 with Tuscar, you come up here to the Three Falls Lookout, and there will be a purple glowy axe on the ground for a material. You pick that up, and then you will come over here to this gentleman, right over here, uh, and you will create a ice pickaxe. And the reason why that is important is because over here is the ice fishing area. Last week, this was active. And when this is active, you can crack open the ice and then start fishing out of those pools. And what you get out of that is rhymefish tuna. So I'm going to jump over there and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so now that we're over here in this area, I'm going to fly over this. And you're going to start seeing that there's going to be some goldfish on the map right here. So this gentleman already has one active. I'm going to fly over to this other one so I can actually show you guys me cracking one open if it's not already cracked open. Yep, this guy's AFKing here. So once you get 50 uh, regular fishing and then you pick up that ice pick and you're level 10 renowned with the Tuscar. And you can get ten, level 10 renowned by doing the Lore Master as well as doing a meta achievement called Lend a Helping Span. Uh, and once you complete those, you're 
going to be decent there. Obviously, you need to do some community feasts uh, probably in there as well. But once you do that, you'll get this pickaxe, uh, ice pickaxe, which will open up these pools. Now, this is, once again, it's dormant. Uh, and what dormant means is that it doesn't have that fish that the other areas have over it. And that fish means that you can increase it, like this one currently says rich on it, where you get 125% increased uh, chance of finding uh, ominous conches, as well as 125% chance to find rare schools of fish. Over here, what that meant is when you open these things up, they would go from 3 minutes to 5 minutes to 10 minutes in duration, as well as you have a 20% chance of having a deep ice fishing hole. The deep ice fishing hole has a 50% chance to give you 2 every single time that you fish. And the thing that you're going to get once you fish is going to be, uh, once I fish it up here in just a second, there we go, is going to be this frosted rhyme fin tuna. Uh, now, this is not the important part of this. The important part of this, uh, of the entire thing, is that you're going to get these green items that you can then turn into the Tuscar. Uh, but the way that you get these is going to be through those uh, an increased rate. You can get them through the regular pulls, but you're going to have an increased rate when this area is active to get them through the deep fishing pools. Currently, the active area, once again, is going to be this magma thresher area over here, and you get magma threshers, which is this item right here called magma thresher, which you can prospect these, uh, but from what we found out, there's not a whole lot of value in prospecting them, but when you get the overheated pools in this area, those do have the chance of giving you the green items, and the green items are like a draconium nugget, uh, you get a fish net, there is a branch that you can get. All of these items are going to allow you to turn them into the Tuscar for increased rep rewards. So if you actively go through these fishing spots and you hit the increased reward one, which is going to be the overheated thresher pool inside the magma one that's currently active, so you can test this out yourself, or inside the deep fishing holes uh, that are over here. Um, those are going to give you those increased rep rewards. I'm going to go back over to Tuscar area and show you exactly what you can turn in uh, and tell you how much that they give you. All right, so now that we're back in the village, we come over here to this gentleman. Once you talk to him initially, you're going to actually craft the items. So you're going to craft the draconium nugget, the strong uh, sea vine, battered, imbued, made net, Iron Tree Branch, as well as the Salinated Cervite. All of these items right here, initially you have to craft an item, which is going to require about three of each of them, I believe. Uh, but once you do that, you can actually turn them all in for rep rewards. So if we exit out of this, and we go here, exit out of it again, talk to them, boom. See? Draconium Nuggets. So this is the green item that you have a chance to fish up uh, inside those increased locations. Currently, like I said, it's up there in Waking Shore, but what we were doing is we were farming a ton of fish. Now, why were we farming a ton of fish? It wasn't because we knew that it was actually for Tuscar Rep at all. This was actually kind of happened by accident where we got a ton of these green items uh, as well as obviously, like I said, I have a guildmate that's already reached 30 a couple days ago. They were farming a ton of the fish. And the reason why they were farming a ton of this fish, uh, because this ry frosted Rhymefin tuna had some underlining things that we didn't know existed about it off the get-go. So reaching Renown 10 when we did was not common. Uh, I would say, because we were able to complete all of our lore masters, like I said, the Land of Helping Span quest as well as we were doing the Community Feast, we got to 10 very, very quickly. So, we were one of the few people that were actually able to ice fish at the time. And what we found was this rhyme fit, this frosted Rhymefin tuna, that once you click on it, because it, right here it says brush off the ice coating of this fish, once you do that, uh, you have to wait an hour. And when you wait an hour, it turns into a rotten Rhymefin tuna. Now, the fish itself sells for a good price on the auction house, and it's because you also use these in some fish feast, or uh, not fish feast, but uh, feast for raids and stuff like that. But you can click on it, wait an hour to defrost it, and it'll turn into a rotten Rhymefin tuna. The rotten Rhymefin tuna, when you click on it, has a chance to give you a soggy pack deck. Um, and what that does, like, I'll try to click it, let's see if we get one. Put it up here because my bag's been having issues. Okay, I didn't get the soggy pack this time. But what happens is if you get the soggy pack, the soggy pack, when you click on it, will 100% give you Dark Moon Fair cards. Like I have two in here from a previous one uh, where I got a 2 of fire and an 8 of fire. And this was very early on inside the uh, 
the release where we were able to get to 10 and start farming these. Um, and the thing that you wanted to do was open these up for a gambling chance at getting aces. Because aces are the rare card for every single deck. All of the other cards are pretty easy to get, but the aces themselves were very hard to get. And if you were able to get an ace at a gambling pressing, you know, the Ryan Fintuna to even get a soggy deck and then press a soggy deck to get aces, that was the game that we were playing to get money. Um, and that's what we were trying to do initially when we were doing all of this ice fishing, is that we found out that it's an easy way to get Dark Moon decks. Um, not actually make the decks, because that wasn't actually valuable, but getting the aces so that we could sell them. Because, like, the Ace of Fire was about 450,000 gold initially, and then it started dropping down to where it was around 300,000 gold, and now they're very, very cheap. But, at the time, people were buying them. So we were farming these like crazy because we were just printing money pretty much because everybody was buying either the fish to try and gamble themselves or they were buying the decks to once again try to gamble themselves which the decks at the time that we were selling them were in the high seven thousands low eight thousand i want to say ish range um you know we had a couple that went down towards six thousand when we were actively doing it um but six thousand for a soggy pack that we just fished out of the water pretty much was very good profit, especially for the few people that were able to just fish these. There are several people who gambled on the auction house and just bought the fish from other people that could fish and then did their, you know, luck of the dice. I was able just to fish to get it, so it was all 100% profit for me. And one day I got super, super lucky uh, with a lot of the fish that I brought up, and I got 16 different kinds of aces, several fires, and that netted me gaining 5 million gold in profit over the course of the start of the expansion. Currently, you can see my character is at 4.493, um, because I've obviously spent a little bit of money as I was leveling up things like my professions, my leatherworking, so on and so forth. Um, but... I started this expansion with about 130k uh, gold, and getting all the way up to 5 million is definitely very, very nice. And this is what we were doing initially to get money, and it just so happened that that also was the best way to get Tuscar rep um, at the time, because the fishing hole was active. So, that explains it pretty much. Uh, what you want to do is you want to go to the fishing areas that are active, and once you get them up to rich they have a chance of having an increased spot like i said uh inside the ice fishing area it's going to be the deep ice fishing holes inside the magma area it's the overheated magma thresher pools but the magma thresher area only has about five pools that spawn in total and they're like regular fishing pools unlike the ice fishing one which isn't technically fishing you don't get any fishing skill while you fish there you don't get any normal fish while you fish there either um it is purely just this uh frosted rhyme fin so hopefully next week the ice area will be active again and that you guys will all be able to use this info to gain a ton of reputation with um, the Tuscar. Is it super exciting? No, it's really not. But if you wanted to get a Dark Moon deck for free um, or if you just wanted to sell some of the fish on the auction house for a little bit of profit uh, because they're still currently the fish themselves are selling for like 260 gold a piece. Um, so if you wanted to make a little bit of gold, not nearly as much gold as we were making off the beginning of this, but you make some gold, you can. But the main thing is you can get rep through just going and fishing. Um, and that is how we got to, I personally am at 22 Tuscar rep with them, and like I said, other people in my guild have made it to 30 already by just honestly fishing more last week. Fishing was the name of the game. Alright, so now we have wrapped up all of the different renowns and reputations that you can really do. So if we look at my reputations, um, you know, it shows 16 uh, 16 and a half with dragon scale, 22 and a half with Tuscar. I'm capped out with uh, the centaurs, which, if you're wondering if Paragon boxes exist, they do. Um, Winter Pelt Fur Blog. Nobody knows where this actually exists <laughs> from the people I've talked to. Um, mm. So, unsure about this one, to be honest, but uh, we have some rep there. Uh, we're still unfriendly with them. Valdraken Accord is going to be that 17. And underneath the Valdraken Accord, you have several uh, sub things inside it like the artisan uh, artisans consortium uh, you have the cobalt assembly which is at maximum uh, that's where you get that 389 ring sabellion is at ally uh, and then true friend with rathian and you want true friend with one of the two of these to get that ring as well as the 398 back piece 
with the Tuscar. Since we just finished that up, I did get the last piece of gear from them, which is going to be a 389 shoulder piece. So if we look at my gear currently, I'm sitting at 381 equipped, 383 in my bags, um, and most of this is, or a lot of it is from Renowned Gear, as well as the rares. So the rares inside Dragon Isles all have a chance to drop gear, uh, and then depending on the type of rare it is, can drop a higher item level gear, and it's all dependent on your item level itself. If we look at the map, I'll go over this shortly, over here uh, for Brackenhide Hollow, uh, all of these main uh, rares in the corner are going to be super rares that can give you up to 385 gear um, over inside the citadel once again these are the same deal these can give up to 385 gear um, and there are certain rares that can give you a pretty decent chunk of rep for feral druids in particular one that you want to be on the lookout is over here in tears hold um, it's called the ancient protector uh, you have to summon pylons around in order to actually activate it. You have four pylons you have to activate. You have to kill a defense matrix in order to spawn or to get the item. And then you need five of those. And then once you have five of those, you transform it into a different item that then you can activate the pillars. It's very, very quick. Several people are doing it every single day. Uh, and that's what's going to give us our pull arm um, for feral druids. So make sure that you're looking at the rares across the map. There's way more uh, content in there as far as what rares give what that I won't be able to cover. So look up a Wowhead guide for that, or there's several videos at this point going over all the rare farms. Um, but that is how I got my gear, is I did my Mythic Zeros week one. Uh, for week two, I have yet to actually do my Mythic Zeros because my Mythic Plus team is going to be doing them tomorrow uh, as I'm recording this video. Um, so I haven't done my week two mythic zeros but all my gear is already above 372 so i don't have to worry about trying to like get increases from mythic zero um what i'm looking for inside my mythic zero reclear at this point is going to be a titan four matrix which you can use to craft gear like this one up here i crafted these hands which are 382 because i maxed them out because of my leather working which is a great way to get something without using your spark. I did not need to use my spark in order to craft these 382s. I just needed the Titan Matrix 4 uh, and a ton of leatherworking skill. And that is ultimately uh, all the gear that I've gotten. Most of it's through rep. Some of it, very few of them, are through Mythic Zeros. Most of it's, uh, a decent chunk of it's through Rares. I do have several other variations to the gear as well uh, down here. Different rings, necklaces, trinkets, a lot of different trinkets because it's kind of hard to tell which ones are what because sims are not currently working or functioning correctly, especially if you look at their APIs and how they're sequencing abilities. They are definitely not correct currently, at least the last time I checked them, they definitely weren't for the majority of classes, um, which there is a lot of information, uh, especially with the new talent trees, different builds, all of the different abilities, and synergizing all of that together is very hard to do, so raid bots is definitely going to take a little longer to get everything sorted out to find out what's what. Um, so just be cautious if you're just purely going off of sims right now And I know that's hard to say because most people are like well go sim your character to find out what's the best and currently sims are Not exactly working. So it's kind of hard to say go do that, right? But it is still very early on in expansion currently It's just pretty much item level is king for the majority of this get as much item level as you can That way you have the most stats that you can that you can have that way you can actually Do the best you can with what you got is what I'm, is what I'm trying to get at um but we did pretty well throughout these first two weeks, and hopefully we get a little bit more. I do, like I said, have a piece that I can craft at 4.05, um, and then next week, at the start of next week, we're going to get our second um, Spark of Ingenuity, which is the big item that allows you to craft the higher item level pieces, like this 4.05 piece. And once I get that Spark of Ingenuity for my second one, I'll be able to craft two 405-ish areas uh, once I complete another Renown type or just farm a ton of Mythic Plus, right? Um, which is the goal. So the very last thing I want to go over is professions. Professions are definitely something that are much more integrated inside Dragonflight. I went with Leatherworking and Skinning. I have both of them maxed out. Um, and I've placed a ton of knowledge into Leatherworking itself. So in total, I think I have somewhere in the range of 155 points currently. And that's because I've maxed out several renowns that give you crafting knowledge as well as I've crafted several of the first 
crafts, which all give you knowledge uh, as, and buying recipes and so on and so forth, that uh, you can make that first craft that gives you increased knowledge. Uh, so for me, for my guild, I told them that I would make the uh, armor kits and you know anything in that range so I, I maxed out the armor kits I also I'm able to make the tools so I maxed out this so I can make maxed out tools um, with the bonding and stitching and then for primary uh, primordial leatherworking I went in and I maxed out decaying, decaying grass because I have all of the decaying patterns um, so those are probably one of the ones I'm going to be aiming for myself is the decaying patterns um, and then I came over here so I can actually make some of those with increased capabilities. And this is something that I'm going to have to wait a little bit on for next week as far as finishing these off. I need seven more points to finish this off so that I can actually attach all of the increases to the piece of the gear. And then in order to have the highest skill possible for making boots, I need to max out the rest of the boots. And then I'll be able to craft the highest item level possible with boots which is great. It's great that they give you the capability of grinding out uh, knowledge as well as finding this knowledge throughout the world and treasures, finding the uh, profession master that gives you a whole bunch of profession, uh, the, dragons, uh, the dragon eggs that you can find throughout the world as well give you it, um, and so on and so forth. There's a ton. And currently I'm able to actually select another one to go into, but I'm going to wait on that one because I don't know which one I want to do just yet uh, because... I don't know what gear I'm going to get. So once I figure out what gear I'm going to be able to get, uh, then I will craft one of these pieces of gear. Belt's probably a good choice just because it's not a tier slot, but once again, we'll have to wait and see. And that's pretty much all I wanted to go over with professions. Uh, if you don't have professions or if you're not you know, super into it, you can just craft work order it. Uh, the, working, the work order system is kind of neat inside Dragonflight where you can just ask for somebody else to craft it for you. However, if it's a public craft and not a private, uh, private or personal craft, um, their quality of your craft can be anything. Um, as long as you supply all the mats, it'll be anything as long as they have the capability of craft it. So they could craft a three star instead of a five star. So if you know a crafter, uh, if you know somebody in your guild or you just know somebody in like trade chat or something like that, that's posting that they can make a tier five of an item, then you want to personal, uh, send a personal work order to them. And when you do it as a personal work order, you can actually send it, set it at a quality limit. So if they're not actually able to make it at that limit, then it won't waste your materials. Um, and it'll just, they'll have to cancel the order and your materials get sent back to you. So make sure that you're doing that correctly and you're not just public craft already, uh, making craft orders for the public because they will just craft you a low quality item. And that's pretty much it. This has been a pretty long video. We went over the start, which was uh, a start of the expansion and launch, which was very, very rough. We geared up. We did all the renowns. There's a lot of different uh, bits and bobs inside there for the renowns. Hope you guys are grinding well. And then we ended it off with professions. So professions and gearing, obviously. Um, and I hope that uh, you guys are enjoying Dragonflight. I'm looking... I'm looking very forward to this next week because of all of the content that's going to be available. I love Mythic Plus, and Feral is looking super, super strong in Mythic Plus right now. And I'm very excited to test the waters and see how far we can go and uh, aim for that title this season for sure. Uh, and obviously look to killing uh, Razageth uh, on Mythic is the goal for this tier. I will be streaming a significant portion more at the start of next week. Uh, I did stream a lot on launch as well as leveling and some of the grind. Um, however, when I got stuck fishing for 30 hours or something like that, um, I didn't think that that was going to be the most exciting content, so I didn't stream that. As well as the hunts, when I was just spamming out hunts left and right, didn't stream that just because it was very continuous. All you did was go from one hunt, kill a whole bunch of mobs, go to the next hunt, kill a whole bunch of mobs, and so on and so forth. Um, but I will get better at uh, being up on my stream. If you guys want to check me out, it's going to be twitch.tv slash sageshifter uh, and come and check it out. As well as, once again, I want to give a huge thank you to all the support because I got reached over 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, and that means a lot to me. So thank you guys, and uh, I'll keep the content coming out as steadily as I can. And past that, thank you guys again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.